bed. I'm living in a very rural area where my neighbor's house is a 10 minute walk. I live with my husband, parents-in-law, and my brother-in-law. That night, it was just me and my mother-in-law. We were about to sleep, laying our bedding side by side. After turning off the lights, we continued to chat for a while until... We heard something <gasps> from the garden! There's only you and me! What should we do now? It sounds like they're going through our garage. We should get out of here because this isn't safe! We evacuated to the only room in the house that can be locked, the restroom. Hello? I called the police in the dark, with a quiet voice so that they wouldn't find us. While in the middle of all this anxiety, I looked at my mother-in-law. Mother, that... Um, I grabbed this as we left our bedroom. My fencing swords. The truth is, both my mother-in-law and I are experts in kendo. I quit when I got married, but my mother-in-law hasn't lost her skills, since she still teaches at the community gym. Hey, if there's two experts with the fencing sword, we might have a chance even if the burglar is alarmed. All at once, I felt calm, and I started to see things more clearly. The footsteps indicate that there is probably only one person in the garden. We heard no sound of a vehicle, so they must have parked their car far away and walked here, meaning they can't get away immediately. The storage with the keys and hatchets is locked, so there's no danger of them being taken out. No use of vehicle, so this means this is done by someone who knows the house is empty, or there's only women here. Is it someone from the neighborhood? I'm such a detective! Oh, Cotting, we can see from this window. Isn't it dim? What are they doing? Are they trying to take the bicycle? But it's locked and chained to the wall of the garage, so there's no way they can take it. Wait, isn't that Katsuda's wife? What? And 15 minutes later... Hey! What are you doing there? Get off me! The police arrived and the burglar was caught. It was as we thought, our neighbor's wife, Akane. It's a little complicated, but my brother-in-law's childhood friend is Katsuda, and his wife is Akane. Our house is halfway up a mountain with no roads around our house, so motocross bicycles are more convenient than cars, and all five of us in the family ride them regularly. My brother's bicycle especially is astonishingly expensive. That's so cool. I want one too. Oh, yeah. Since it's the middle of nowhere, maybe they don't lock them. I could paint over it and no one will think I stole it. No car and no lights. Are they all away? I'm so lucky. I'll do my best for my darling husband. And I just might as well just take mine while I'm at it. That seems to be the case. Since it's a small town, it will be difficult for Akane to live here as she used to. Katsuda wants a divorce, but their child is still young, so he seems to be concerned. By the way, the most talked about topic in this story was... What? You have dogs in the garden? The doghouse is next to the garage? And they were asleep throughout the whole incident? The three dogs did not bark once till it all ended, and they woke up to the noise of police cars. Arriving on site, currently questioning the... Human! Not the human! What do we get to do? Let's play! They were thrilled by the crowd of people and started showing their tricks. I can do this. I'll show you. And one was asleep till the end. I mean, they are pets and not guard dogs. And they're very adorable, so it's good. But I need you guys to be a little more careful. Let's go for a walk. Play with me. I'm Susuchi. I just got married to Mr. Tachibana and will be living at my parent-in-law's house with my parents-in-law and brother-in-law. However... Ouch! Don't you dare cut corners on cleaning because we are expecting guests today! Before I knew it, I was doing all the chores in my parents-in-law's house. Can you even do this? You're not a good wife. What's with the look on your eyes? I was a victim of domestic violence from my husband and mother-in-law. This is the change. I hope you aren't lying to me. Of course. I had no money at all to free myself. I understand that it's crazy now that I look back on it. You're getting married, so you have to follow their rules. Okay. At the time, my own parents were persuading me, so I assumed that this was what marriage was all about. My brother-in-law wasn't violent. Here's your lunch. Even when I serve lunch... You're pissing me off! Or when I'm beaten in front of him, he ignored me. On top of that... 
What? Is that the trash I threw away earlier? He went through my garbage. Oh. Oh. I fell asleep. Huh? He would be standing right behind me while I was napping. G good night. And it was creepy like he was stalking me. One day, after a year and a half of living like this, there was only my brother-in-law and myself at home when he called me to his room. Hey, can I have a moment? What? What could it be? I was so used to my violent husband and mother-in-law that disobeying him was not an option for me. Once I went to the room, my brother-in-law gave me an envelope without saying a word. Inside the envelope was several hundred thousand yen in cash. This is... It's lunch money. Why? Because what you're doing every day is worth that much. This is only for lunch, so you deserve more. You should wake up! What they're doing to you is domestic violence, and also economic abuse. The court can recognize it as cause for divorce, and it's something that you can charge alimony for. I was dizzy from being awakened and feeling guilty, but... I... I... I want to run away! Then you should have this. This contains video and audio proof of abuse and pictures of your bruises. This is the medical certificate of when you were beaten up and broke your bone. I saw you just threw it away. Oh. These and the account book you were writing should be enough proof. I'm really sorry I couldn't help you soon. Thanks for lunch. Soon after that, I ran away from the house and went to the lawyer that was consulting my brother-in-law. After that was not so different from a normal divorce. Due to all the solid proof, I received a large amount of compensation and was able to start a new life in a distant land. Later, my lawyer told me about my ex and his mother. They're pretty depressed with the large amount of alimony and their little brother missing. So my brother-in-law must have left home as well. My ex-brother-in-law occasionally writes to me, and it sounds like he's doing well there too. If I see him again, I want to apologize to him for treating him like he was a stalker. This is a story I heard from a woman working as a social worker. A social worker is someone who helps people in various difficult situations by providing mental and medicinal support. This woman was working at an orphanage at the time. A two-year-old girl whose parents had died in an accident was taken in at the facility. She didn't have any other immediate relatives so the woman was looking after her. Look, a doggy! Oh, so cute! One day, the director... Can we have a minute? Excuse me? Who are these people? We're that girl's distant relatives. We'd like to take her in. From what I can see, they're a very wealthy family. Hmm. Hmm? I see you have a child. Oh yes, just one. When you told them that they would be getting a sister, how did they react? We don't want to take her as a daughter, but as a marriage partner. Huh? Our son is 15 years old, you see, but he has a disability. That girl, Kati, we'd like her to look after our son. Huh? What the heck are these people saying? <laughs> Oh my, it's just a joke. There's no way that could be true. We only have our son, so we would like a daughter. We would raise her responsibly. Phew, what wonderful relatives she has. Cardin will have a good life. I wonder if that's true. The couple that said they were Karin's relatives, don't you think they were kind of suspicious? Hmm? Really? They're rich and well off in society. I thought they were upstanding people. I wonder if it's okay to leave Karin with those people. No one would believe her suspicions about the couple. When she thought about that girl being taken in by those people, she couldn't sleep at night. Those days continued until the girl left the facility. Bye bye! I wonder if this is for the best. However, six months later... <sighs> What's the meaning of this? This kid stopped talking a few days ago. Is she sick or something? It's probably aphasia. Aphasia is a symptom that interferes with how words are processed. It might be related to the accident. Half a year has passed since the accident. It's possible that the shock from what happened was delayed. There isn't anything. We didn't agree to this. We didn't hear about any of that. We don't want this kid anymore! D director Why were they so upset? I don't know. 
Maybe it's just as Yuri said, they were strange people. Once this girl regains her speech, they might come back for her. If that happens, this time for sure, this girl. So, with that before the girl recovered, the woman put together adoption papers for a non-related family and made it so the couple could not contact the girl anymore. Hmm, and was the girl eventually able to speak again? She did, because this is a story about you. Huh? Yes, the woman in the story was the one who adopted me. Hooray! An omelette! An auntie told me that I was adopted, but I see. I've been alive for 30 years and had no idea I was in such a terrifying situation. If they had taken me in, I wonder what kind of life I would have lived. Money is tight. Please! This is how my younger brother and his wife ended up living with our parents just after they got married. But after our father died, my sister-in-law's attitude changed completely. She spent all day just lazing around the house. Akane, what about cleaning? Don't worry about it. Akane, it's your turn to cook dinner tonight. I'm just going out. I'll be back in time to eat dinner. She's just playing around. And my useless brother can do nothing to change her. He just stands there helplessly. I'm going out. Just throw them out already. I will help you do it. This is what I said to my mother when she wanted advice, but it was my mother who left the house first. Why do you have to leave your house? Nothing good came of that place. I wasn't getting along well with your father and that person. Huh? That person? No, don't worry. I am going to buy an apartment near the house instead. <laughs> right. A few months later. Help me, sis! For some reason, my sister-in-law was calling in tears. There's dust all over the altar! What have you been doing? Apparently, my aunt, dad's younger sister, had been coming to the house and angrily lecturing her every day after seeing the state of it. When I asked my mother about it, Your aunt is pretty pedantic. I didn't want to speak bad about my husband's sister. So I kept this fact from you and your brother. So basically, after my mother left the house, my sister-in-law became the one who bore the brunt of her aunt's anger. And this anger was pretty constant. Akane, open up! I know you're in there! She easily saw through Akane's ploy to look like she was out of the house. Even if she went out for just a little bit, my aunt's network of information passing spies was vast. Such a fine day, and instead of doing the washing, you're wasting time in a place like this. <laughs> she would even lecture her outside of the house. It was so embarrassing. I can never go back to the shop again. It took everything I had to keep myself from laughing while listening to her. I've had enough of this house. I want to go live with your mother in her apartment. She then began with shameless statements like this. I don't want anything to do with your crap. Don't call me again. So, I hung up on her. Later, I got a call from my brother. I want mom to come home. It's your fault she left. You didn't take her side. Then at least do something about our aunt. <laughs> Think of this as an opportunity. She can train Akane on how to do proper housework. Ooh, that's a good idea. Idiot. But, mom, have you picked one yet? Hmm, so many choices. At least all this gave her the chance to live by herself for the first time in her life. Hello, my name is Susuji. I'm just a regular office worker, nothing special. This is a story about a crazy coworker that used to work here. Her name was Akane. Nice to meet you. She was fresh out of college. She joined us in spring. She was a quick learner and efficient worker. Here you go. She was always smiling and talking to others. Everyone at the office liked her. At least, that's what we thought at first. But she had a completely different side we didn't know about. Human resources. Hidagi. Sales. Kuroki. Accounting. Katsura. They all had relations with Akane. She also targeted other men at work who seemed vulnerable and slept with them too. It didn't matter to her if the man was married, single, or had a girlfriend. Stealing men from others was her pastime. She was like a hyena. She caused trouble from time to time. Don't touch my girl! She's 
she's mine! You too! Please don't fight over me! All part of being a popular girl. Wow. Wow. Everyone at work tried to stay away. Who should I go after today? And after she got with most of the men at work. Everyone! I have an announcement to make! I'm getting married to Akamatsu-san! I'm pregnant with his baby! What? For real? Wait, Akamatsu-san got divorced? No, not yet. I think him and his wife are separated, though. <laughs> his wife couldn't do it for him. So I'm giving birth to his child. She wasn't even here for a full year. She got pregnant with a co-worker who was separated with his wife at the time and married him. And so, she stole him away got pregnant with his baby, and quit the company. But according to Akamatsu's wife, he wouldn't agree to the divorce for such a long time. I didn't know what to do, but she came and solved everything! <laughs> Everyone at work was like, You're a perfect match! Two pieces of trash. <laughs> Best wishes to you both! Keep her on the leash so she doesn't start hunting men again. Aww! Everyone is so happy for me! I'm such a lucky girl. But that didn't last long. A few months after Akane left the company. Ugh, it's from Akane. What does she want? Hello? Hey, listen to this! What's up? Listen to this! It's bullshit! He tricked me! The marriage was a sham! He asked me to move in with his parents who live in the middle of nowhere within a year. And apparently, he has a second wife there! And he has other women on the side! Before we got married, he said he had tens of millions of hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings. But I checked his account and the balance was two digits. And he sends money to his parents every month. And he even asked me to start working after I give birth. It wasn't supposed to be like this! What should I do? Help me! What am I supposed to do? So that's why his ex-wife wasn't living with him. Well, good luck. Wait, I wasn't even friends with her. Why did she call me? The next day, hey, I got a call from Akane. She was complaining about all these things. Me too! I didn't pick up, so she sent me a text. Looks like she was calling her old co-workers one at a time. She said she didn't want to get pregnant, but he wouldn't wear a condom. Wow, but wait, didn't she say his wife couldn't do it, so I'm giving birth to his child? Are you guys talking about Akane? She sent me a pretty crazy text, too. Hey, I was thinking. Do you want to get back together? Huh? What are you talking about? I think I still like you, Tokusa. Wait up. We... we weren't even dating. What? I meant nothing to you? Wow. She's so dumb. She wouldn't stop, so I blocked her number. Yeah, me too. Wow, another text from her. I'm blocking her too. And so, most people at work blocked her. So nobody knew what happened with the baby or their marriage. When you steal something or hurt someone, it just comes back to you. That's what I learned from all this. <laughs> When I was in high school, this couple living across from me was always fighting. I could hear everything. And whenever they were fighting, they made their kid wait outside. Then one day... The wind is so strong! It was saying something about a storm coming tonight. Oh! It's that kid! They're making him wait outside again. Mom! I'm home! Hey there. Wait, is that... Is that the boy from the house across the street? Yeah, he was outside, shaking. Unbelievable! And on a cold day like this? That's it! My mom's been worried about him for a while now. I'm going to have a little talk with them. And so she went to pay them a visit. Being a complete stranger and all, I'm not sure if I'm in the right position to say this, but putting your son out on a cold night like this? What the hell are you guys thinking? He'll be staying with me tonight. Think about what you've done and talk to each other about it. That day, I spent the night with Kuroki, the kid from the house across the street. Like it? Yeah. Eat up, Kuroki-kun. The next morning... I've come to pick up Kuroki. The thing is, my husband is very violent. I didn't want him hitting my son, so that's why I put him outside whenever we started fighting. Oh, I didn't know. Thank you so much. 
Come by any time. Bye, Karoki-kun. But they kept fighting like always. Katsura-kun. Hey, your parents fighting again? Yeah. Come on, let's play video games. And Kuroki came running to our house every time. It was fun. It felt like having a little brother. Six months later, Kuroki's parents got a divorce. Oh, Kuroki moved away? Yeah, this morning. They left in a hurry. The wife left the house, and the husband went back to his parents' house with Kuroki-kun. She left her son with her violent husband. Wow. They didn't even say anything. I'm worried. Afterwards, I had no idea what happened to Kuroki. Then 15 years passed. Believe it or not, I met Kuroki at my workplace. Wow! This takes me back. I'm going to cry. At first, Kuroki didn't seem to notice at all. But when I told him about our childhood, he remembered. Remember? I lived in the house across from yours before you moved? Huh? Wait, is that you, Katsura-kun? Cheers! <laughs> I heard you moved out, so I thought you lived somewhere far away. I can't believe you were living in the next city. <laughs> and then we end up in the same company. What are the odds, right? Was everything okay with your dad? You know, the violence and all? Huh? What are you talking about? Dad never laid a finger on me. Turns out I had it all wrong. They were fighting because my mom was always in debt and cheating on my dad. Once mom left, dad didn't even get remarried. He worked day and night to raise me. But he passed away two years ago due to an illness. I don't know. I'm sorry I brought it up. No, it's okay. Oh, that reminds me. My mom never cooked for me. It was always ready-made food from the supermarket. So when I saw the stuffed cabbage your mom made for me, I had no idea how to eat it. I still remember that. And when I finally figured it out, it was so good. <laughs> I'll let my mom know. And after that, we went out drinking from time to time. It was really nice to see him again. Ten years later, Kuroki passed away. He got the same disease that took his father's life. After hearing you moved away, I was really worried, man. But I'm so glad our paths crossed again. And I was able to see you smiling again, Kuroki. It's strange. I've spent more time with Kuroki as an adult than as kids. But when I think about you, I remember our time together as kids. My name is Karin. Karin, I just got a call from Dad. Grandpa passed away. Oh. My parents got a divorce when I was one years old. My mom took me, and ever since then, I haven't seen my father once. My grandfather on my father's side passed away. My father wanted me to show up to a meeting about the inheritance. I'm sure you can just sign some papers. You probably shouldn't go. Well, I'd like to meet my father at least once. And I'd like to say goodbye to Grandpa too, so... Don't worry, Mom. I'll be fine. I guess a part of me still wanted a dad, you know? But it's been 20 years. I'm getting nervous. Mom never told me why she got a divorce. What if he's a violent man? Oh no. I'm so nervous all of a sudden. Karin? Is that you? Wow, you've all grown up! Basically, it was the first time we've seen each other, but he welcomed me with open arms. The relatives are all here too. Okay. <gasps> Sorry, Chuck. Wow, you look exactly like me when I was young. Who are you? We look alike. Right? She looks exactly like you. I almost fell when I saw her. Karin, this is my younger sister, so she's your aunt. There it is. Look here. The photo album from back in the day. Wow, you really look like me. Mom said I had my dad's looks, so it's not surprising I look like his sister. The meeting went smoothly, and we all started eating dinner. Karin John, you look so much like your aunt. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised too. Where's dad? Ah, uh, probably with his sister in the kitchen. <laughs> I bet. Huh? I mean, they got a divorce because he was so obsessed with his sister, right? What? Really? You didn't know? Hey, what are you saying? His daughter is right in front of you. 
It's okay. Please, tell me more. Uh, uh, okay. He's always been obsessed with his younger sister. She was much younger than he was. Even after he got married, he took your mom's stuff and gave it to his sister without asking. Here, take this. He even went out and left your mom, who was in her last month of pregnancy, to celebrate his sister's birthday. I'm off to my parents' house. What? Tomorrow is my due date. He was out of control, and your mom couldn't take it anymore. So she tried to get a divorce, but then your dad said, I don't need a wife who gets in the way of me and my sister. When your aunt heard about this, she came running and apologized to your mother. But they ended up getting a divorce anyways. I'm so sorry for everything my brother's done, beauty son. Please, it's not your fault. Yeah, you're much more important than Yuri. What? My aunt was annoyed by my dad's obsession, and she tried to keep her distance. But no matter how hard she tried, he wouldn't leave her alone, so she just gave up. So that's probably why he's still single. I think now I know why he was so nice to me. Hey, Karin, sorry for leaving you all alone here. Hope I didn't keep you waiting. Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, I know. I have a great idea. Here, you two, stand next to each other. What is it? Here, let me take a picture. Say cheese. What are you going to do with that? Uh, I'm making it my background. You both look pretty. Uh. I know, you should spend the night here. But mom would be worried. Don't worry about her. She had you all to herself for such a long time. Even better, just move in with us. Uh, hold on there. Wait, you're the one that didn't call all these years. Karin? And now you're all excited to see me? No, it's not like that. I didn't know you grew up to be such a pretty girl. If I knew, I would have went to your house to get you. That's it. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Huh? Why? It's your own fault. Unfortunately, I told him my phone number, so he called and emailed me non-stop. Karin, I want to see you. I love you. I'm so sad. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, gross. After I blocked him, he started sending me letters. He even showed up at my work once to pick me up. He was basically stalking me. So I talked to my aunt. I'm so sorry. I'll stop him at all costs. I don't want you to go through the same thing I did. She must have been through a lot, too. I'm sorry, Karin. I should have told you about Dad. I don't think he would still be like this in his 50s. Mom, it's just that I thought you'd be shocked to hear it. You didn't tell him that we were moving, did you? Uh-uh. Good. Let's cut ties with him completely. Yeah. Can I call him one last time, though? Uh, yeah. But are you sure? Hey, Dad. Oh, Karin. I'm so glad you called. Finally. Can you never show your face in front of me again? In fact, don't ever contact me, please. You gross me out, Dad. What? Ugh. I guess this is what all dads with daughters have to go through. If you try anything again, I'm going to kill myself, you piece of shit. What? I've been running away from him all this time. But in the end, everything that I had bottled up inside me exploded. Why, Karin? Why? Hey, listen. If you won't leave Karin alone, I'm cutting ties with you too. What? Since then, my dad stopped calling me altogether. It was as if none of this ever happened. Today, I live happily with my mom at our new place. <laughs> I'm Kuroki. I started working soon after graduating high school. Kuroki, make a copy of this. Okay. See you tomorrow. Got it. There's a lot. Well, I guess it can't be helped since I'm the new guy. I'll help you. Thank you so much. Don't mention it. Her name is Adami. She's been working here five years longer than I have. Thanks for your hard work today. See you tomorrow. Guess I'll go home too. Hmm? Azami? Oh! Oh, it's you, Kuroki. You still haven't gone home yet? I could say the same to you. What are you doing here so late? Um, well, checking the tools and the stock levels, minor repairs. People don't really want to do odd jobs like these. 
I'll do it. I'm the new guy here. Thank you. But this isn't something I can let up again or do. Ah, so you've got your hands full with your own work already, don't you? Azami works so hard, but this isn't a burden she should have to bear alone. All the other guys should help her out. It was hard for a newbie like me to give his opinion. I still thought like that when... <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> One day... Azami? Ow! 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 I'm okay, I'm okay. It was heavy and I stumbled a little. That day, I made up my mind. The next day, at the morning meeting, Azami always stayed late at work alone. I think we should divide the work more evenly. The injury she sustained on her knee was because she was trying too hard last night, and it caught up with her. I know this is an arrogant thing for a new employee to say, and I apologize. Everyone, including the section chief, listened quietly without judging. I see. Thank you for saying that, Kuroki. We've been following the if-you-notice-do-it model, but some people simply won't pitch in. Let's divide the work evenly. I'm happy I spoke up. Sorry, Azami. We've been relying on you too much. We'll be sure to help out more from now on. Thank you very much. The next day, she was fired. What?! Why was she fired, Section Chief?! Did she do something wrong?! Uh... <laughs> she was selling our documents illegally. No way! It's just no way! Which means... The reason she was always alone was so she could work in secrecy. No one asked you for your help. Well, what can I say? Thanks to you, the company was saved, but uh, don't worry about it. I'm Karin. I work a part-time job four days a week from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. When I have something to do, I come home earlier than usual. Ugh, there's one here again. There's always a stranger's car parked in my parking spot. What should I do now? Oh, that person is coming over. Excuse me, but this is my parking spot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please don't make this mistake again. I'll move my car now, sorry. This kept happening over and over. The interesting thing was that it was always a different person. When I warned them not to do it again, they would always just laugh it off. <laughs> These baffling incidents continued to occur until one day when I finally learned what was going on. The perpetrator was Azami, who lives in the same apartment building as me. The one who discovered it was Yuri, one of my co-workers. Yeah, that's Azami. I heard a while ago that she was running a home baking studio out of her apartment. What? Yuri, why do you know what's going on at my apartment? I used to go to Azami's class for a while. I quit almost immediately, though. Azami knows when the parking lot will be empty, so she tells her students that on this day at this time, such and such parking space will be free, and to use that space. It's crazy that she is telling her students to use parking spaces that other people should be using, isn't it? I thought it was suspicious, so I quit going there. I can't believe she was actually using those spots without permission. So she knows when I'm not home and is using my parking space all she wants? Where's her common sense? This pisses me off. I went straight to Azumi's place and confronted her about the matter. Um, would you please stop using other people's parking spots without permission? Hmm, did you meet one of my students, perchance? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you I'm sorry me. This has been causing problems for me. Well, then would you tell me the days you're working and what times will be gone? I'll adjust my schedule. Huh? No, this isn't a matter of adjusting a schedule. I'm paying to use that parking space in. Hmm, but I'm only borrowing it when you're not using it. So what's the problem? Oh, excuse me. My students will be coming now, so please tell me when you work later, okay? Bye! Ugh, she doesn't feel any remorse at all? It didn't seem like Azumi understood at all, so I asked the building management to speak with her about it. 
She was given a warning, but it didn't seem to get through to her. Finally, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Hey, what's going on? I can't move my car. <laughs> Sorry, you're home right now, aren't you? My student can't get out of the parking lot. Hurry and move your car. I told you many times, but you didn't seem to understand. I had to no choice but to park there. Well, it can't be helped, I guess. I'll move my car. I thought she learned her lesson. <laughs> but a few days later... What the? Another car is parked in my spot! My patience had finally run out. Just like before, I parked in front of the student's car, then went to my parents' house for the night with my husband. I asked my neighbor, who was on good terms with, to keep an eye on the situation. She said that the student kept slamming on her horn and screaming like she was being attacked. Let me out! Let me out! Shut up! You're disturbing the whole neighborhood! People around the area started yelling at her to be quiet. Since she couldn't move her car, she had no choice but to go home without it. The next day, when I returned home... Kari, that was very mean of you! Do you realize how much trouble you caused for my student? Trouble? That's my line. I talked to you about this many times. Why don't you get it? If you have any complaints, talk to the building manager about it. <laughs> After that, Azumi called the company managing the apartment. Of course, they didn't listen to a word she had to say. Actually, they said if they were to give her any further warnings, that she would be evicted and reported. Eventually, Azumi moved out. Azumi moved to a house and is continuing her baking classes. She contacted me asking if I wanted to rejoin or not. Really? I hope she isn't bothering her neighbors. But still, Azumi really is oblivious. I'm surprised I couldn't get through to her or her students. I guess if you have a weird teacher, your students turn out weird too. <laughs> That's a terrifying thought. And so, my parking lot troubles came to an end. The other day, I got an invitation to a wedding for my friend in middle school. Akane? That Akane? I don't really remember hanging out with her, and we haven't spoken for ages. But she did invite me. I guess I'll go. Wedding day. Congratulations! Akane-chan, you're so pretty! Hey, Akane-chan! It's been a while! The ceremony was fantastic! Congratulations! Oh, hey, Yuri-chan. Long time no see. Your clothes look outdated as usual. What is that anyways? It's so lame. Where did you get that? Huh? Hey, Akane, what are you saying? <laughs> well, hope you enjoy our elegant party. After that, she ignored me. She talked bad about me behind my back, and she singled me out. She started acting really mean towards me. And to top it off, she dropped a bomb on me. Did I do something to her? All right, then. Now, a friend of the bride and groom will sing a song for them. Their good friend, Miss Yuri. Please, come up here. <gasps> we hear you're an amazing piano player. I... I don't know anything about this. Here, Yuri-chan, use this. Good luck. This is one of the hardest songs to play. I tried it a few times at karaoke, but the ending is really high-pitched. If I miss it, it'll ruin the whole song. But I can't say no in this situation. Why is she harassing me like this? What did I do to deserve this? Fine, I have no choice. Let's do this. The full version is too difficult, so I play the short version. I'll make some adjustments so I can sing at the same time. After the high-pitched ending... <sighs> it wasn't perfect, but I got through it somehow. Amazing! She's incredible! That was great! That's a really hard song to play. Awesome! Yuri-san, that was amazing! I'm touched! Uh, thank you. And finally, the wedding was over. I'm exhausted. No way I'm going to the after party. Let's go home. Hey! You're coming to the after party, right? Huh? Uh, no. Just come, okay? Akane forced me to attend the after party. It was a big room with karaoke. There were about 50 people there. 
All right, then. Time to get this karaoke competition started. First up, the fry, Akane-san. I practice really hard. I dedicate this song to karaoke. Wait, this song? This song, it's the one her friend sang for her at the wedding, right? Yeah. I wasn't sure she noticed the look on everyone's face, but she kept singing with passion. And at the climax of the song... She messed it up big time. <laughs> that was hilarious! She was so off! That girl at the wedding was much better! <laughs> Kane, it was good. Yeah, you were great. Thank you. Why? What's that? You didn't say you were touched! Why? No, um, I'm touched. Really. You're just saying that. You thought she was better, right? Huh? Akane chan, please calm down. Shut up! Ouch! Hot! <gasps> Stop it! What's wrong with you? She threw soup on her. What the hell is wrong with you? What's your problem, anyways? Is she okay? Better treat her burns. I didn't know you were like this. Why are you taking Yuri's side, huh? I'm not the bad guy here. Yuri, don't you run away. I was more scared about how crazy Akane was acting than the burn. I locked myself in the bathroom. One hour later. Yuri-san, how's your burn? I got her parents to pick up Akane. I don't think I'll be able to talk with her today. I feel bad, but I asked everyone to go home. Later, Kuroki-san took me home on a taxi. He talked with my parents and apologized. Yuri-san, I'm so sorry for everything that happened today. I know an apology won't fix anything, but here, take this. It's for your medical fees and dry cleaning. I'll bring Akane to apologize too, I promise. Few days later. We're, we're truly, truly sorry, sorry for, everything. for everything. Akane's parents came over with gifts and money to apologize. According to her parents, in middle school, she found out that her crush liked me. So she wanted to get back at me by showing off her wedding. I heard they were talking about divorce. The divorce? It's all Yuri's fault. She even stole Karoki away from me. But apparently, she's blaming everything on me. Locked inside her room. It's over between us. Finally, the divorce was final. She never came to see me to apologize. But everyone in her hometown found out about this incident and people talked behind her back. Hey, did you hear about Akane? Wait, really? Good riddance, I guess. Well, she brought it all on herself. I kind of felt bad for her, but at the same time, I felt a bit satisfied. Hmm. Yuri, I've got something I want to talk with you about. What's up? This is Karin, a fellow secretary at the company I used to work for. The new worker that showed up just before you left the company is being ostracized. I was quite shocked when I heard this. Ostracized? <laughs> In that company? Or no one would get angry at you no matter what you did wrong? That place was a shining example of a company that treated its employees well. Go home anytime you want. Everyone makes mistakes. Actually, this new salesman, Tashibana, he used to work in a larger corporation, but decided to come back to his hometown to look after his parents. Well, apparently... Secretaries are a waste! They just sit on their butts and are a financial drain on the company! According to him. What? In my previous job, we axed all the secretaries, and this led to a huge cut in labor costs. We should do the same here. Yeah, but... Us other staff should do the administration for ourselves. It's very simple work. You're actually saying that in front of me, a secretary? I can see where you are coming from. The secretarial work is too complicated. Then I'll take this directly to the top! He then forced his way into the president's office with his written proposal and spent the next two hours giving an impassioned presentation. There you have it! What do you think? Tachibana, you are completely underestimating admin. But if you really think this way, try it for yourself. Demonstrate to me that this is doable. So why don't you try doing all the secretary's work by yourself first? Okay, I will. And that's where his self-imposed ostracism began. For example... I ran out of stationary supplies. There's more in the storeroom. You can go and get them for yourself. I need to clear some travel expenses and expenditures. You need to prepare a travel expenses form and go to the bank and take out the money yourself. My chair broke! Here is the number for a maintenance company. 
Give them a call to get it fixed. I need to get those documents to make a quote. Please make a written request by yourself. Ah! Oh, the name tag on my locker! Here's some tape for you to fix it with. I need to submit the end of year tax statements. Here's the number for the tax office. Please contact them yourself. These kinds of things. I might get him to do the payroll too. That might be a bit much. He did the expense forms, end of year tax forms, and prepared other documents, while everything else was handled by the person in charge of payroll. If he just gave us the data, the secretaries could do it all so much quicker. And actually, Hesky was able to do that all by himself. When his father passed away, the company sent flowers to the funeral, as well as condolence money. So in reality, the company was supporting Tachibana, even though he was being ostracized. Isn't that getting to the point where it's crossing labor laws? Maybe, but Tachibana just said, I will do all the administration work! I'm in charge of it all by myself to show that my proposal is correct! As he was handing in the documents. Also, apparently, the president has a copy of the recording of Tachibana's original proposal. Although, it was just a useless presentation with no real application. He also has free use of facilities and the cleaning is getting done. The higher-ups are checking and giving their seal of approval on the documents he submits and meetings are running smoothly. No one is talking down or gossiping about him, and they say hello and chat when they see him, even invite him out drinking. He put himself in this situation and is only disadvantaged to the extent of the proposal he sent out. So, as long as it doesn't turn into anything malicious or bullying, it should be no problem in regards to the law. Then, a month later... Tachibana, do you now see just how hard administration is? Why don't you stop being so stubborn on this? If you admit you were wrong, no one will hold it against you. Tachibana? I'm so sorry! I had no idea admin was so hard! My previous company wasn't like this, so I locked into it, and it turned out they had higher temps to do the admin work! <laughs> so even though they cut internal labor costs, that money just went to hiring contractors! So all this time, I was just misunderstanding the situation! I just really wanted to show my motivation when starting here to get some good results. I'm really, really sorry. It's okay. Karin? Yes? I'm sorry for underestimating just how hard your job really is. I will never look down on secretaries again. It's no problem, really. No one is angry. It must have been super tough, right? Doing your own work plus the paperwork? You're pretty amazing yourself. From now on, leave all the hard administration jobs to us, and you can focus on your own work. Thank you. I will. After that, Tachibana let go of his previous stubborn ways, and his ostracism came to an end. He had understood just how important secretaries are. Now, he's an important part of the company, and sales are on the rise. Of course, all with support of the secretaries. Our job is often seen as simple and is made fun of. But I wish more people would understand all the things that go on behind the scenes that they don't see. Was what Karen stated. My name is Kuroki. I have two kids. The older one is Tokusa. The younger one is Karin. They're both adorable. But recently, I had been busy with work. I often worked on weekends too, so I wasn't able to spend time with my children. <sighs> Every day I got home after they were already asleep, and the next morning, I left before they woke up. Even if I had a day off, I couldn't move because I was exhausted from work, so I couldn't take them anywhere. The least I could do was take baths with them on my day off. Hey! You washed away my bubbles! <laughs> Karin especially liked taking baths. She was always playing in the tub with a smile on her face. You asked for it! Take that! <laughs> I loved those moments we had together. But one day... No! What's the matter, Karin? Your brother is already inside. I don't want to take a bath! That day, Karin refused to take a bath. She cried like crazy. It wasn't normal. Something was up. Finally, I somehow got her to take a bath. Tokusa was already finished by that time. And it wasn't just that day. The next weekend, and the one after that, Karin kept refusing to take baths. Her hair is all messed up. In fact, it looked like she wasn't taking baths at all. Hey, Akane? What? Karin refuses to take baths these days. Do you know anything about that? Oh, really?
What do you mean, oh really? They're just kids. She probably just didn't feel like it. If you take everything they say seriously, you won't be able to raise them, you know? I see. To be honest, things aren't going well with my wife. It's not like anything happened. I just don't think she loves me anymore. Something is going on. One day when my wife went out, I questioned Tokusa. Do you know anything about this? If you know something, tell me, no matter how small. Tokusa didn't speak, but it was clear he knew something. It's okay. I won't tell mom. It was intuition. Really? Oh, you're home early today? Akane, we need to talk. We're getting a divorce. What? Oh, that little shit. He's your son! How can you call him that? You don't love me? Fine. I knew for some time that you didn't love me anymore, but I was hoping that wasn't the case with the children. Ugh. She was neglecting our children. She only acted the part when I was home. The kids always ate instant noodles for dinner. She didn't bathe them either. So Tokusa was the one who had to help Karin take baths. He wasn't even ten. How was he supposed to take care of her? That's why Karin didn't want to take baths. My wife was frequently seeing some guy she met on social media. Today was no exception. And when I had the night shifts, she sometimes brought him home. The worst part about all this was that she threatened Tokusa to keep his mouth shut. Tokusa was shaking the entire time when he told me all this. All I could do was hug him and apologize. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I divorced Akane, and now I'm raising both of them. I switched jobs, too. It pays less, but the important thing was spending more time with my children. Today, Karin likes baths, just like she used to. Daddy, bath time! Yeah, yeah, I'm coming! She says that now, but soon, she won't even take baths with me. It's kind of sad, but I can't wait to see you both grow up. My name is Kuroki. I run my own business using a computer. This all happened when every home still had ADSL connections. Kuroki-kun, my TV isn't working. Okay, I'll come by later and take a look. Your remote is out of batteries. Oh! My friendly neighbor sometimes asked me to help her with tech stuff, and I didn't mind helping her, but one day... Coming! Probably Mrs. Yuri again. I headed towards the door, Hello, you're Kuroki-san, right? <laughs> they were old ladies who I'd never seen before. Who are they? Turns out, Yuri-san told her friends about me. I'm not good with these things, so he helps me out. He's really helpful. He's a good man. Ow! And the rumors spread. Yuri-san told us about you. You have a lot of computers, right? Give me one! Teach me how to use computers! You have money too, right? Give me money! And so, that's why they came to see me. Um, I'm not sure what she said about me, but... Yuri-san and the others, they're good neighbors who helped me out. So I return the favor from time to time. I don't even know you guys. I can't help you. <sighs> Fine, so useless. He came all this way for you. What do you expect from a shut-in? Whatever. What the hell is their problem? Weird old ladies. A few days later, someone broke in while I was out. What? Gone! My computer? All my apps? My printer? The miniature safe? They were all gone! Words can't describe how I feel. <laughs> Fortunately, they didn't touch my server, so my data and apps were safe. <laughs> Lucky you! What are you talking about? I had one of the best computers available at the time. In the safe, I had my bank documents, cards, and bonds. Mommy, look at this strange man. This sucks! Tsuji, no! But I had an idea who was responsible. I bet it was one of the old ladies that came over the other day. 
Right after getting a new computer, I looked something up. They said they wanted a computer, so they probably didn't sell it. I had something installed on my computer. Unlike today, back then, you needed an IP address to connect to the internet. An IP address is like a number given to the computer. Whenever there was a bad connection and I got disconnected, the number would change, which was annoying. So I made it possible to periodically check the current IP address. It's okay if you don't understand what I'm saying. What I mean by all this is... There we go! Their screen! I could see exactly what they were doing. The culprit was just surfing the net. Hello? Could you come over? I called the police and showed the screen to the officer. See? Someone is using my computer! Find out who and arrest them! However... Uh... But how do I know who's using it? Huh? That's what I'm asking you to find out! Can I borrow this computer then? What? No way! I need this for my job! Uh, then... If you can control that computer remotely, why don't you just type in a message saying, Hey, can I have my computer back? <laughs> I gave up. The police was useless. Screw them! I'll do it myself! I looked everything up myself. And then... Just as I thought, it was one of the old ladies that took my computer. Her name was Azami, and her husband was using the computer. <laughs> I told the police, but... But I'm not sure if I can use this as evidence. Yeah, whatever. Just as I imagined, they were still useless. Alright then. I found the culprit, but the police won't do anything. What should I do? I was thinking about my next move. Why don't you just type in a message saying, Hey, can I have my computer back? Then I remembered what that police officer said before. Alright. Where am I? I want to go home. Please take me home. And the computer comes alive. Oh, they deleted it. Take this! I kept sending them messages, and they kept deleting them. After a while, they turned off the computer. Ah, oh, they're back at it again. Whenever they turned it on again, I knew. So I kept sending them messages. I started enjoying this. Yay! Fun! I used all kinds of technology to harass them. Even when they turned it off, I controlled the computer remotely and turned it back on, then back off. I played the sound of a woman crying late at night. This must be terrifying. I made it so whenever they turned on the computer at night, a blood-soaked hand showed up as the wallpaper. I even increased the number of hands by the day. This is a great way to blow off some steam during work. About a week passed since I started harassing them. They stopped using the computer altogether. Well, I'm not surprised. I think we're done here. He'll probably pull the plug. To add the final touch, I remotely installed a sound player application. It was a text-to-sound app. But the sound was terrible, so I couldn't use it. And I just had it saved in my computer all this time. Turn this all the way up. Then turn this up over here. And... Done! <sighs> Alright, bedtime. What did I send them? Ah, it turned on again! Why does it turn on on its own? And why does the wallpaper keep changing, Azami? I don't know! What do you mean you don't know? You're the one who brought this computer home! <gasps> Oh, I remember now. When the local police won't do anything, I can just go to a higher ranking office like the prefecture police and ask them for help. My friend told me once. I have a day off tomorrow. I guess I'll go. Kuroki! What the hell is going on? Yeah, stop messing around! What's wrong with you? Giving out cursed computers to others! Huh? My computer! Look at what they've done to you! I didn't give you anything! That lady stole it from me! What? What did you say? Yeah! Azami was going to pretend like she was innocent. There was no talking to her. It was 3 a.m. Hearing them yelling, the neighbors started to gather to see what was going on. What the? What is it? Someone even called the police. What is it now? Mr. Kuroki, 
You again. <sighs> so sleepy. What do you mean, again? This is the stolen computer I was telling you about, and these people are responsible! Really? What are you saying? This man gave it to my wife! He gave it to you, is that right? Hmm. I think. Please come down to the station. Winner! Later, the police searched Azami's house. They found other items she stole from me. Sorry. And she admitted to the crime. Her husband was shocked, to say the least. Please withdraw the victim report! <laughs> he asked me to show mercy. Well, if you pay for everything, including damages, I decided to settle. But apparently, that lady was stealing stuff from other houses, too. Prison. So she ended up going to jail anyways. By the way, um, they're saying the computer came alive and that their family got cursed. Do you know anything about that? They were freaking out. I didn't really understand what they were saying. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They probably just launched the horror game I had installed by accident. How am I supposed to know what they were doing with my computer? I didn't tell anyone about how I messed with them. So rumors went about saying that the computer came alive and tried to go home. Today, everyone in the neighborhood knew about this incident. They call it the case of the cursed computer. <laughs>